future. Amen. Amen. All right. In the book of Revelations, the 12th chapter. Again, as we conclude prayerfully today, if the Lord chooses to go forward, we'll go further. If he says stop, we'll stop. Whatever he say do, that's what we'll do. Say amen. amen. All right. In Revelations chapter 12, and uh, actually I'm going to start in verse 10. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start in verse 10. It says this. And I heard a loud voice. Well, in fact, no, I'm going to start in 7. And there was war in heaven, and Michael... Excuse me. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. There was conflict in heaven. For a brief moment, Satan decided, he got beside himself and decided he was going to come up there and try to ascend above God and make his kingdom and so forth. And that didn't work out too well. He was cast down and cast out by the Michael, the angel. Verse 10, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. I want you to underline the word, underline this part, the word of their testimony. And love not their lives unto the death. Now, the word overcome, or rather overcame, over, overcame, not overcome, overcame, is mentioned three times in the Bible. Now, overcome, overcame, is mentioned three times in the Bible. Not an overcomer, but overcame is mentioned three times in the Bible. This is the third spot where it's mentioned at. The second place it's mentioned is Revelation, the third chapter. And verse 21. To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. Again, the word overcame. Now, in these two verses, in these two verses, in the Greek, it means to overpower, to conquer, or triumph. It means to overpower, to conquer, and triumph. The last place, or you could say the first place is mentioned, is in the book of Acts, the 19th chapter. Verse 16. And the man, now let me give you the backdrop of the story. This is when the seven sons of Sceva, who were sons of a, a priest, Decided they were going to take it upon themselves and go and cast out a devil out of somebody in the name of Jesus who they heard Paul preached. That experience was not a nice experience for them. It didn't work out very well. So this is what's happened after, this is what happens to them after they, as they were trying to do that. And the man in the, excuse me, and the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Now here, the word overcame has a different meaning. Here, it means to lord over it, gain dominion over, subdue. In this context, it means harshly, harshly. 
it's a different understanding than the, first, than the other two in Revelations. It's different. Here, it's a different understanding because the one doing the over, becoming the overcame one is demonic here. In the other two references, it is the children of God doing it. In the other two references. Now, the devil defeated. Now, hear me good. I want you to pay attention and take notes today that you don't miss this. The devil defeated. Not, has, not is defeating. He defeated. He conquered. The devil defeated the non-spirit filled church back in Ephesus. He's not defeating. He actually defeated the non-spirit filled church. He conquered it. The non-spirit filled ones. When the Roman Emperor Constantine consolidated both the pagan and Christianity into one. Into one. He took paganism. That's when Rome became, quote unquote, a Christianity became the religion of the Roman Empire under Constantine, an emperor. But what he did, he blended it. He blended the pagan practices. Paganism is basically witchcraft. And he blended Christianity into one. And by doing so, he was able to persuade the church that did not have the Holy Spirit. The church that did not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The sanctified people, the justified people. He was able to conquer them. And seize control of the church. He was able to conquer them. When Acts the 19th chapter comes into play, that is... When Satan overcomes, overcame. The other two references is when the ones that he does not overcome. But he has already defeated the church in the beginning. By virtue of the Holy Spirit not being there. The rejection, that is how you get a foolish virgin. She has no Holy Spirit. She can be conquered. She can be overcome. Now, if you go back to Revelation, the 12th chapter, notice, notice how Satan himself is able to enlist a third of the spiritual beings, a third of them. He's able to enlist them, conquer them, prevail against them, and, and twist them to follow him. On a fool's errand. A fool's errand meaning, a fool's errand, that's the old way of saying, walking into a blind situation, you're gonna, it's not going to work. You're going to get destroyed in any ways. So that's an old school way of saying, you're going down a, a road, a wrong way road. That's what it means. On a fool's errand, knowing that he could not ever conquer God, but yet led him there. Yet led him there. That's the same thing that he was able to do with the foolish virgin. He's able to conquer her because of the lack of the Holy Spirit in the early church. He's able to persuade the bishops and the hierarchy to agree with this. How did he do it? How did Constantine do it? With the same thing the church world today does. Festivals, games, attractions. They had huge Roman festivals. And they invited all the Christian people to come. And they did all the different things in there that you want to do to entertain the people. And by virtue of the entertainment that came in, they were able to seduce them to follow along. And as yet, Satan has not changed the tactic. It's still the same. He's not changed the tactic. That's why the foolish virgin is able. And when the Lord says that you should live holy, the foolish virgin says, I don't have to live holy. Or your idea of holiness is not, that's not mine. I don't have to do all that like that. God want me to be happy. God want me to have my life. See, the foolish virgin thinks like that. When the Bible says, be holy, for I am holy. 
When the Bible says holiness without no man shall see the Lord, but the foolish version says, well, I don't have to do all that like that. Not like that. Not like that over there. God wants me to have some life. God wants me to be able to enjoy myself. God wants me to be happy. But yet his word screams at what I'm trying to do. It says don't do it, but I, the foolish version says, I'm going to do that. That's what happened in the early church. That's exactly what happened. And they were able to be seduced and pulled away in 3, 325 A.D. at Nicaea. That's where they had the colleague of the bishops and they came together and they were able to outvote the wise virgin by vote. God never, it's not a sin if you want to vote in your church. You should. You really should. They should if the church is going to buy a building, the people should be a part of that. If the church is going to do certain things, people should be a part of that. But the church shouldn't vote on who's going to be the pastor. A church can vote about in terms of who's going to be on the uh, board of trustees and all that. You can do that if you choose to, if you choose to. You don't have to, but you could do that if you wanted to. You can, do, you can make you can church and drink votes, but it, all this stuff, it, we need to have a say. We, we need to do this and we need to do that. That's not God's way. Democracy. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Democracy outside of God is the worst thing that can ever hit this world. Communism is better than democracy outside of God. Even communism is. Democracy outside of God is the gateway to hell. Because everything can go when democracy doesn't have God as a sinner. Everything can go. You can do what you want to do. We think that freedom of speech is a good thing. We think that that's all right. That's good. But freedom of speech outside of the context of God's holiness opens the door for every other thing to speak as well. Everything else that goes against the word of God can speak too. Democracy outside of God is the worst thing that this world could ever have. Ever have. And when they bring that in, in original intent, it was supposed to be a good thing. But as Satan came in and, and, and um, um, what am I saying? And intertwined himself in it and mingled himself in it and brought liberties with it, it went away from being its original way into something being far from that. Amen. To where now you can have filthiness and horribleness on TV at every channel that you look at. Every movie got curse word in it, sex in it, or the devil in it, one way or the other. Every movie. Even Paw Patrol, the cartoon, they said they're going to have a non-binary dog in there. And what have you. Democracy, I'm going to say it again, I might get banned on YouTube for it. Oh, well. We'll go back doing it the old way with CDs. That's what we'll do. Democracy outside of godliness is the worst thing that could ever happen to humanity. Yeah. Ever happen to humanity. If God is not the center of it, if God is not the orchestrator of it, every voice in hell will speak yeah. and have a platform. And those voices of hell will out override the voice of God. Yeah. They'll outshout it because the voices of hell appeal to man's lust. Appeal to man's desires and man's thoughts and man's ways of thinking and man's thought processes and, and so forth. Appeal to those things. It appeals to that. It attracts that. Do you think the devil would honestly show you something that you do not want? Do you actually think he would show you something that does not appeal to you? Do you really, in your wildest imagination, think the devil's going to send you something that disgusts you? The only way it will disgust the person is if they're under and in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Then sin disgusts a person. Not people, not people, not people, but sin disgusts a person. Amen. Not people. Amen. Not people. I want to make that real clear. Not people, but sin disgusts a person. Satan will always send us the things that appeal to us. He'll always send us things that entice us and attract us. Why again? Going back, going back. I got a lot of scriptures. I don't even know if I'm going to go through all that today. But a lot of, a lot of, when he went into heaven, how do you think he's able to seduce, to seduce these beings 
You just watch the video, which is a poor man's rendition of what heaven is like. Because no human mind can fathom what heaven is like. No human mind can conceive it. No human mind can put it together. No matter how imaginative you want to be, I want to be. Nobody in their mind can see what it's going to be like. We need, and I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. You need to stop listening to these people on TV, on YouTube, talking about I died and went to heaven, and I seen all that. Half of them people is lying. Half, over half of them is lying, and their familiar spirit got a hold of them. And just like you need to stop listening to a whole bunch of them said they died and went to hell. They ain't got to hell because if you died and went to hell and God brought you back, you sure enough going to live saved. You're not going to be able to say no curse words and act a fool. You went to hell. You saw hell. You was in hell. And you're going to come back and still be cursing. You ain't going to no hell. You ain't going to no hell. You need to stop watching these people. You stop listening to these people. Just unsubscribe to them thing. Uh, take them off your friends list. Stop listening to them. Well, it sounded real good. Don't you know the devil know how to make things sound real good? Don't you know he know how to make it sound appealing? How do you think he's able to tell you what heaven's like? Because he was in heaven. He's able to tell you what the, what, what, what the golden throne looks like. He's able to tell you what the temple looks like. He's able to show you what the cherubims look like. He's able to show you what these, because he's been there. He's been there. He knows, and he's got an excellent memory. He knows how to replicate it. And I went flat line and I seen all this light and whatever. And, uh, but yet you could still lie. Yet you could still have envy in your heart towards somebody. Yet you could still talk about somebody and put them down. Yet you could still backstab. You could still lie on your income tax. You could still lie to your neighbor, lie to your wife, lie to your husband, lie to your dog, your cat. And yet you saw glory. Last time I read my Bible, everybody that saw an angel, they got their act together in that Bible. Paul, who was a chief of sinners, I mean a sinner of sinners. The man putting people in jail. Any of you ever been, how many of y'all have even been to jail? I can put both my hands. I've been there a couple of times. You've been, you've been putting people in the jail, putting people in the jail, within the jail, in the sex parties he was, in the immorality he was. He was single. He was doing some of this and some of that and a whole lot of other things. He was really messing it up real bad and was on his way to go do some more mess. On the Bible says he was going into people's houses, helling both men and women. When that word helling means he was putting them in prison, putting them in the stocks, in the jail. And yet this man is on his way to Damascus and God meets him in the road. It was God. Yes, it was in the light. That was God. Meets him in the light. That was the same God that was in the fire that was with Israel in the wilderness. The same one. That was the same God that was in the pillar of cloud that led them. You ever notice, read your Bible, you ever read your Bible and see that even the pillar of cloud in the day, if that cloud did not move, the people did not move. If it didn't, if it moved one foot, then they moved one foot. If it moved a mile and a half, then they moved a mile, but they did not move until the cloud moved. We want to get ahead of God. We want to get ahead of the preacher. We want to get ahead of everybody. Get ahead of everything because I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And you're running down a one-way street getting run into a head-on collision and don't even know what you're doing. And we need to slow the road down and wait on God. We need to slow the road down and get some, get, and learn how to be patient and let God get into your life and let God speak to you. Amen. Satan is an opportunist and going crazy. And folk need to realize something. He knows how to appeal to you. I'm not just talking about your sexual activity. I'm not just, that's, that's elementary stuff there. He knows how to appeal to your greater desires. Power, control, money, wealth. Why do you think so many of y'all out here playing the lotto? Who inquired right there? So many of y'all playing mega this and mega that, scratch this and scratch that. You better put that stuff away before God get a hold of you. You better not go back in that liquor store, that 7-Eleven ever again and buy that stuff no more. Go to the machine. You better leave it alone. Better leave it alone. Amen. Well, I'm going to bless the church. You're lying to yourself. You're not going to bless the church. You get a million and a half dollars. If you can't bless the church with $1,200, how are you going to bless the church with $12 million? Amen. If I can't pay my tithes on $1,200, that's $120. How in the world am I going to pay it on $12 million and that's a million and a a million $200,000? But I'm going to bless the church. The devil's lying to you because you know when you get that money, you're going to go crazy. I'm going to Vegas. I'll hold myself a vacation. I'm going to do this. 
I'm going to here, I'm going to there, I'm going to Spain, I'm going to be on the beach and whatever. And the people got thongs on, they got whatever, and they're going to hell if they don't get right. People looking crazy, suntan and whatever, half naked out their mind, everybody going to hell if they don't get right. And I'm going to, I owe it to myself, talking about I'm saved on the beach and everybody got on a thong. You ain't saved like that. Y'all not talking to me today, but I'm telling you the truth. I don't need no organ to preach. I love that man to death. I've been knowing that man since he was 16, but I don't need no organ to preach. Amen. People lying and too many Christians going to the beach and the folks is naked and whatever, talking about I'm saved, I love God, and speaking in tongues. How can you be saved and everybody out there is naked? Talking about I ain't looking at nobody. You're lying to yourself. If your eyes is open, you're looking. If your eyes is open, you're looking. And then another, we need to stop this thing. Father, if you tell me, we you know if you just, just men just need to control themselves. They just need not to look then. If what I'm wearing is causing you to mess up, you just need not to look. I would tell a woman just to her face, say, well, you need to close your eyes when you drive your car then. Because you sure enough they need to have your eyes open to drive your car to see where you're going. How do you expect a man to close his eyes when he got to walk down the street? When he got to walk into the building? How do you expect him to do that? So next time you women think that you man you well, need to get up off me about wearing this dress and these pants, you need to leave me alone. Well, you need to close your eyes when you drive your car then and see how far that gets you. That's why everything needs to be done in modesty. Yeah. Cover up the butt, cover up the titties, cover it all up. I know what I said in this pulpit. Cover it all up. Nobody need to be seeing nothing shaking, wiggling, bouncing or nothing. Men, Satan will get in a man's mind. The more woman's behind bounce, the more hot he gets. The more cleavage he see bouncing, the more excited he gets. Men are visual. Men are predators. Men have a lower nature in them. And if they're not saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, fire baptized, the devil going to get in them. And when they get at home and by themselves, their mind is going to run like a racetrack. Amen. I'm telling the truth right now. I've been doing this long enough. And what have you. I've been doing this long enough. I didn't talk to enough men and had to grow my own self. Had to grow my own self. And if a man is not full of the Holy Ghost, when he see all that shaking like that, all that bouncing like that, it's going to be in his mind. And when he go home, at night, I don't care if he is married, it's going to be in his mind. And if he's not saved, sanctified, and full of the Holy Ghost, he's going to replay that in his mind. And that image is going to be stuck with him for days, weeks, or however long it may be. And guess what? The woman who presented herself, she's just as guilty and she'll stand before God for that. Amen. Just like a man that's got an e-feminine spirit. We got that question a few weeks ago. A man, an e-feminine spirit, that's a man that acts like a woman. He's not gay. He's not homosexual. He's not bisexual. But he's got woman tendencies in his thinking process. Men, too many men get offended and men shouldn't be getting offended like that. That's a woman's nature to get offended. I'm offended because they looked at me a certain kind. I've heard more men that want to fit and fist fight out of the street, but you got offended because some other man looked at you a certain kind of way. That's the way a woman thinks. You're not supposed to think like that. Men are supposed to be men and women are supposed to be women. Men are supposed to have some strength about them, some integrity about them. I don't care if you talk about me, just don't lay your hands on me. That's all. Just don't do that one. If you lay my hands on you, I'm just getting you off of me. I'm not trying to whoop you. I'm just getting your hands off me. That's all I'm trying to do. But your words should not bother me like that. Amen. Should not. It was quiet. Why ain't nothing but women saying amen right there? We read it. We read it in Revelations, the 12th chapter, that the devil. Let me read you another thing. Hold on here. Go back to Revelations, the 12th chapter. No, I believe the Holy Spirit said, so y'all not ready for me to go deeper into this, for us to go deeper into this say yet. So let me just take press pause on that for a minute. Just press pause there for a minute. Still in one of Sister Smith's things. That's her saying. Press pause on it. Let me do this. Look here. Rock in Revelation, the 12th chapter. Look what he says here. Verse 12, 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe. There's your third woe. There's three woes that's mentioned in the Bible. This is the third one right here. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. That's you and me. Look at somebody and say, that's you and me. Now, he's not, talking about your, he's not talking about your enemy only. He's not talking about the folk that died 3,000 years ago. He's talking about you right now. You right now. Therefore, rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. 
Didn't leave nothing out. The earth, what he's talking about, that's talking about American land. That's talking about Russian land. That's talking about the Middle East. That's talking about Africa. That's talking about e everywhere where there's land mass. Everywhere. And the sea. For the devil, for the devil, look at this. For the devil is come down unto you. He didn't come to say hi. He didn't come to check on you and see how you're doing. No, he didn't. Have come down you to have great wrath. That means he's upset and angry because he knoweth that he have but a short time. Amen. No, anytime the Bible says, whoa, you need to wake up and smell the coffee. Anytime you hear the Bible say, whoa, that means, hold on, let me lift my head up. What you talking about, Lord? You try to get my attention here. When you hear the Bible say, whoa, that means you got to open your eyes. Look at somebody and say, open your eyes. Amen. Too many folk is walking with their eyes is open, but their spiritual eye is closed. And you need to open up your eye so you can see that the devil is not playing. The devil want to take your head off. The devil want to take as many people to hell with him as he can. You just read it. He has come down having great wrath. Great wrath. And when you, wrath is beyond anger. Wrath is beyond frustration. Wrath is beyond irritation. When you are in wrath, that's when people kill people, when they're in wrath. That's when people go and murder a whole group of people because they're in wrath. And Satan has come down having great wrath. But hold it, he did not come alone. He did not come alone. Every spirit that did not hold its habitation with him came with him. Every spirit that agreed with him now, I'm not talking about the fallen angels and all of that, because the Bible says they're locked up in hell, in Jude and in Peter. It says that. But every spirit that did not want to listen followed him out the door. All of them followed him. And he's not by himself. The Bible says he's a, is as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You know, he can only devour somebody that wants to be devoured. He can only have somebody that wants to be had. Just like a woman will only give her, unless it's a forced situation, we were talking about that, but she'll only be with somebody she's supposed to, that if she wants to be with them. I know there's fools and idiots and nuts that do stuff and overpower. They'll answer to God and go to hell if they don't get right. But it, when she typically, she'd be with somebody that she wants to be with. Well, when Satan, when the Bible says he's seeking somebody to devour, he cannot devour a Christian unless they allow it to happen. He cannot devour a Christian. That's why a Christian cannot be possessed in their spirit. They can have a devil in their soul and in their flesh, but not in their spirit. Anybody that truly is sanctified and walking with God cannot be possessed in their spirit. But they sure enough can have a devil in their soul. They can have a devil in their flesh. And you need discernment of the spirit of God to cast the devil out. Amen. Too many folk want to get books. Let's read this book and see how to do this. Let's read this. Let's get this class and see how to do this. I'm sorry. You can read a book, go to a class, go to a seminar, go wherever you want to go. That's not going to help you. You need the only way to get a devil out is through the power of the Holy Ghost. That's the only way. The only way to get free and stay free, the Bible says in St. John 8 and 36, he who the Son make free. Now notice how he used that word, make free. That's a violent term. That's a forceful term. Anybody ever make you do something? Anybody ever make you do something that you did not want to do? Anybody ever force you to do something that you didn't want to do? And when the devil, when the, excuse me, not the devil, when the Bible says in, in St. John 8, 36, who the son make free is free indeed, it's not that he overpowers the person's will, but the spirit of the devil that's in the person doesn't want to let him go. And so God forcibly forces the devil out. Look at when Jesus went throughout the land. Everyone he would go and devils would rise up. The Bible says that the devils would throw the people on the ground. Some of them seemed as though they were dead. Some of them seemed as though they thought they were dead. And the Lord would say they're not dead. And he would pick them back up. Some of them the devil would throw them in the fire and what have you. And whatever because he did not want to loose the person. And when you a person has got demonic situation and has gotten a hold of them, it doesn't want to let go. That's called spiritual warfare. Look at somebody say spiritual warfare. 
That's called spiritual warfare. And Christians need to understand that like we read in Revelations, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. That's every citizen. That's every person. That's every grace, every color, every creed, every financial position, every mindset. Woe unto you. Satan has come down having great wrath. He's angry because he knows he lost his habitation. He knows he lost what he had. He knows that. And now he says, now I got to rob. And that's why the Bible says, in St. John 10 and 10. The thief come but to rob, kill, steal, and destroy. You need to understand something right there. Why does he want to steal and rob you? Why does he want to prevent you? Because he know what he had is lost. And so therefore he's trying to keep you from getting what belongs to you. He's trying to keep you and I from crossing over to the throne of God. Y'all can say amen if you want to. Amen. And he has come down having great wrath. He's come down. because, In fact, turn it to Ezekiel, uh, the 28th chapter. Turn it to Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. And see what the Bible says here. Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. Let's look at what Satan had. And go further here. Ezekiel 28 and 11 says this. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, I'm in Ezekiel 28 and 11, going from there. Son of man, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Taurus. There were two kings of Taurus. There's the natural king, and then there's the spiritual king, which is the devil. Uh, king of Taurus and say unto them thus saith the Lord God thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and and perfect in beauty he's talking about the devil perfect in beauty I said it a moment ago I'll say it again the devil is beautiful and he won't send you nothing that's not beautiful the devil will, I know they make the movie the exorcist the hell raiser and all that other stuff no Christian should watch that junk no Christian should watch that no Christian don't talk about I just want to see no Christian should watch that that foolishness and whatever but he doesn't come like that he doesn't come like exorcist he doesn't come like hellraiser he starts doing all that once he's got people and he's tormenting them but he doesn't appeal to a person like that he appeals to a person's nature of what they like he appeals to a person with desires of what they like. He appeals to a person's wants of what they like and whatever. That's why you ever hear, you, you remember before you got saved, you used to say, that's my type over there. Or, that's my type. Yeah, I got one. Mm. Y'all, I know y'all not that saved like that. You need to be real now. Amen. But everybody, men and women had, that's my type. Some like them tall and dark. Some like them short and stalky. Some like them light. Some like them brown. Some like them uh, Asian. Some like them Hispanic. Some like them whatever they like them. Whatever you like, you like what you like. And whatever. And the devil sends you what you like. He sends you what you used to like. He's not going to send you something that you're going to turn your nose up to. You remember when you was a child and your mama brung you food that you didn't like, especially particularly vegetables and whatever. I was never been a fan of vegetables, never in my life, until I got older in life and started to understand the important values of vegetables. Even as an adult, I didn't like them. But I understand it now, and that's why I make sure I get me some vegetables every day. In my body, you do what you want to do. But it's extremely important to your skin. It's extremely important to your blood. It's extremely important to your body's inner workings. It does nothing for muscles and all that. But it's your inner body that you want to be healthy. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? Amen. And so Satan, he doesn't send you the inner beauty. He sends you the outer stuff. Let's look at what the Bible says here. Thou hast been in Eden. Look at that. Now that's... Yes, he was. He was, yes, he was in the garden. How did he get in there? He was in a snake. No, it was more than a snake. It's called a beast. We'll talk about that one another time. Thou hast been in the Eden, the garden of God. He crept in, snuck in, got in there. And that's why you got to lock things down with the Holy Ghost. Because Satan will try to sneak in any kind of way he can get in. He'll try to get past your defenses. He'll try to get past your security system of your heart. He'll try to get in there any way he can. But look at somebody and say, I got to be on my watch. You got to be on your watch and watch your soul area because you sure enough can get messed up and miss God. But look what the devil did. Thou hast been in the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The shortest, the topaz, and the diamond. The barrel, the onyx, and the jasper. The sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of 
of thy chariots and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Look at that. Look at that. He was beautiful. He was excellent. He was something to look at. And notice it said the tablets and pipes. That's musical instrument. He was the, he's the god of music. Did you not know that? He's the god of music. In fact, let's take it. Hold your finger here. Let me help you out. Let me just help you out a little bit. Go to the book of Genesis, but hold your finger right there. And let's see what the Bible says. This is the Holy Spirit. This is not my message today. The Lord's changed all that. And that's all right because he's in charge. Say amen, somebody. All right, go to Genesis, the fourth chapter. I'm going to show you where music comes from in the earth. That's what we're going to do in the Holy Ghost. I don't know. The, uh, we just, if the Lord wants us to go back at another time and finish out who the foolish virgin is, maybe he'll let us do that. And whatever, we're going to do this today. Say amen. All right, in Genesis, the fourth chapter and verse 16 says this. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. He left the garden of Eden. He got put out of there. God ran him out and Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch and he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. That Enoch is not the Enoch that got translated and knew God. That's a different Enoch. It's a different one. It's not the same one. It's a different Enoch. This Enoch is in Cain's lineage of people. That's what he is. He's in Cain's lineage. The other Enoch was in God's lineage or Seth's lineage of people. Now keep going. And Enoch was born, excuse me, and unto Enoch was born Arad. And Arad begot Methuselah, and Methuselah begot Methuselah, and Methuselah begot Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Adah, and the name of the other Zelah. The man, he had a couple of women there. 20. And Adah, now look, now look, now look, now look. Now, and Adah bore Jabal. He was the father of such as dwell in tents and of such as have cattle. That's where you, Seth's people were not like that. Abel, Abel got killed by Cain. And then Seth took up after him. He, God gave him as a replacement. Then people lived in the field. Then people didn't, they didn't know nothing about education and all of that. But these people were educated. They had city. They had money because at that time, cattle represented wealth and money. But all of this is under Cain's people. All of this, because Cain's their forefather. And Jabal was the father of such that dwell in tents and such as have cattle. Now look, and his brother's name was uh, Jabal. And he was the father as such, here it is, as such as handled the harp and organ. Now this is, is, this is in the recreation of the earth. And if you see, that's not Cain, that's not Abel's people. These are Cain's people. And Cain, the Bible says, was of the devil. We'll prove it to you in a moment. Cain was of the devil. Adam was not his father. And Cain was of the devil. And everybody that came from Cain's line was of the devil. And the music came from Cain's line. Is there music in heaven? Yes. But that's heavenly music. But the music that's in this world that these people got now, that's a perversion and a twist to whatever God. Just like, just like, hold it, just like dancing is godly. Dancing is godly. But Satan takes dancing and perverts it. It was David that danced when the Ark of the Covenant came back into Jerusalem. And the Bible says he danced all the way down to his tunic. He wasn't doing a strip tease, but he was happy and excited because the Ark of the Covenant represented the presence of God at that time. And it came back into the city. And so he began to dance and rejoice. Satan take that dance and has turned it into something diabolical and evil. And people shake their butt. They shake their midsex and they shake everything. That's not not godly, that sensuality that attracts the nature of the devil in a person and whatever. But God's dancing is a more godly, it's unorchestrated, it's unhinged, it's, it doesn't have a lot of order to it, there's no rhythm to it. It's pure and innocent, but Satan take it and pervert it. Now I said the devil was, uh, Cain was the devil's father. Let me prove it to you right now. Go to the book of 1 John. Let me go to there, to the book of 1 John, and let's look what the Bible says. Are you bored? All right. Amen. I got the amen corner back today. We can have church now. So miss y'all when y'all ain't there. I know that much. But let's look here. Now, verse, same, first John, not St. John, but first John. Look here. Whosoever, in verse uh, chapter 3, verse 9, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. 10. 
In this, now look, hold it, look at this. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. You mean the devil got offspring? Yes, he does. Just like God got sons and daughters in the earth, the devil got sons and daughters in the earth. Now look, whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. We need to stop all this hatred and all this bitterness and all that kind of thing. We need to let all that go. Look at somebody and say, let it go. And let God take it. Let it go and let God take it. Let all that bitterness and I don't, I'll never forgive you. I'll never this. You need to stop saying never and say, you know what? Let me give this to God. Outside of God, I never could do it. But in God, I can do all things because the Bible says that. But the Bible says all things are possible to them that believe. Say amen. amen. All right. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. To eleven. For this is the message that they heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Look at somebody and say, we got to love one another. Yeah. Amen. Not just your enemy, but you, not, not, excuse me, not just your best friend, not just the person, your neighbor that you like, not the person that's in your family, not your children, your sons, your daughters, your nieces, your nephews. I love them, but I don't like them. No, you got to love everybody. You got to love the people that don't have the same skin color as you. You got to love the people that got more money than you. You got to love the people that treat you wrong. The Bible says, pray for them that despitefully use you. When you understand the understanding of that scripture, he says pray for them that despitefully use you. That means they purpose in their heart to hurt you on purpose. That was the intention of what they did. But he said pray for them and bless them. <laughs> oh, it's a tight thing but it's a good thing. Say amen. But let's keep reading here. For this is the message that was you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Now look, 12. Not as Cain. That's the same Cain that you just read about in Genesis the fourth chapter. Not another king. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. <laughs> Not of, didn't say of Adam. Right. Never, in fact, if you study out Cain's lineage, you'll never see wherever he is ever mentioned as a son of Adam. Never. He's never mentioned as Adam's son. Never. Nowhere in the Bible. Ever. But he's showing up as mentioned of the devil. Because the wicked one is the devil. Y'all can say amen. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. And therefore slew he him because he because his own works were evil, <laughs> were evil, and his brothers righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. Back to Genesis, the fourth chapter, you see that all them people that came from Cain because Cain was not the seed of God. He was not the seed of God who was, the, who was the seed of Adam. He was not that. He was a different kind of seed. And we need to understand that the devil has come down with great wrath and he's getting in all the folk that don't want to listen. All the folk that have a different mindset and a different agenda and a different thought process. All the folk that don't see it quite that way. All the folk that say you don't need to do it like that. You can do it this way and what have you. Some of the most perverted things are the Christian things. Amen. You go to the Christian website, dating site and whatever, and what have you. I remember it was my brother-in-law. Uh, Booty used to come here. And he said, brother, you need to go. And you say, no. And I told him, I said, man, because he wanted to have a whatever. I said, man, go and go to the Christian wait, dating thing and get your a wife over there. He said, no, pastor, you don't know. You ain't going to do that because that one's worse than the secular one. I said, you lying. And he said, I'm not. He said, check it out for yourself. I said, all right. So I went on there. I started looking. I said, what in the, my, what is this? What is this? Now, I ain't going on there for no day. My wife's sitting right here. And then I told my wife about it, and she said, Donald, don't you know they got barracudas or cougar tigers, whatever they call them? I said, what's a barracuda? Uh, whatever it's called. And she said, that's an older woman that's looking for a younger man. And the website was full of them. Full of them. And folk lying, talking about, I love God, but I like jazz music too. <laughs> I love God, but I like to drink the Cavassier too. I love God, but I like to get high on the cannabis too. The devil is a lie. You can't have it both ways. It's got to be one way or the other way. And whatever. And I said, my God, today I came back and told my brother, I said, I told you, didn't I? I said, yeah, I guess you was right. The, the, you must understand. Or you must understand. I'm sure the person that invented the thing probably had the right intention. They were trying to connect Christian folk with Christian folk. But the devil got in there like he does everything, like he did the garden. He got in there and he began to sow seed in there. And other folks started jumping in there and whatever. And now it's anything, hold it, hold it. Anything that God create and the devil get a hold of it is worse off that way. 
Because it takes something that's clean and pure and perverts it and twists it to ungodliness. And whatever. that's why when people backslide, they do worse than the people that's in the world. A backslider is worse off. That's why the Bible says, we'll get it in a minute. A backslider is worse than somebody that's in the world. They talk more nasty. They do more evil. Why? Because Satan is perverting what was there that was righteous. He's going to twist it up, tangle it up, wrap it up, pull it down more than what it was in the beginning. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you today. And whatever. And that's why when you get out there and they get on the devil's territory, the Bible says, you better watch out. You better watch out. Because Matthew 12 chapter says... That when the unclean uh, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a person, that means a person get the devil cast out. They get saved, but they don't get full of the Holy Ghost. He says he goes out uh, the unclean thing, the spirit, and he said, "Oh, I found it clean and swept." That means justified, sanctified, but it was not filled. There was a no, there was not a do not disturb sign on the door of the person's heart. The heart was still open. So he says he gets back in. And now I've had many folks say, "Well, how in the world does he get back in there then?" If, 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 this, if that's the case how does he get back in there then and it's simple it's simple when the Bible says put from you uh, anger and bitterness when the Bible says put away lust and unforgiveness when the Bible says put away all these things uh, preferring one another and, 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 and having inordinate affection and all this and emulations and strife and envy when the Bible says put all these things away when a person gets saved but they do not put those things away it leaves a doorway for the devil to come back in there I'm telling you the truth today. I know they don't preach it like this, but I'm going to preach it this way today. It leaves a doorway for them to come back in there. If a person's still holding on to bitterness, if a person's still holding on to anger, if a person's still holding on to emulation, if a person's still holding on to strife, if a person's still holding on to rejection, there's a doorway open for the devil to come back in there. And when the devil come back in, now remember, you read it in Revelations the 12th chapter. He said, I come down having great wrath. He's looking for an opportunity. He's looking for a door or an entryway, a crack in the window, if you will. And then he comes in through that way, and then because why? Because there was some anger in there that the person didn't give to God. There was some jealousy in there that the person didn't give to God. There was some unforgiveness in there that the person didn't give to God. And therefore, he's able to come back in there. But notice, but notice, the Bible says, when he come back, he don't come back by himself. <laughs> he come back with seven more, more worse than himself. That means you left, when he first left, you might have just been dealing with anger. But now when he come back, he said, I'm bringing perversion with me. <laughs> now when I come back, I'm bringing adultery with me. <laughs> now when I come back, I'm bringing perversion with me. <laughs> now when I come back, I'm bringing pedophile with me. And he brings them back in. And the Bible says the last state of that man is worse than the first state it was. That's why a backslider is more toe up than somebody that never knew God. And we're better off not ever knowing God. The scripture even says that. We'll read it in a minute. The scripture, and look what the Bible, look at the Bible says this. You're better off not even knowing God than to have known God than walk away from him. Because now more devils come. Devils are like bees in a beehive. You know, Bishop Smith got three beehives in his property. He got about an acre and a half. That's fine. But bees, excuse me, not bees, are like flies to mess and junk. Flies don't like to be around stuff that smell good they go to the nasty thing they go to the filth and the un, uh, whatever stuff and they drop the larvae in there which are maggots and what have you and that's why you see flies like nobody Daryl Jones working the dark garbage people thing and drive the tractor and there's flies and pestilence there is that so sir and with and it smells pretty nasty over there is that right and whatever and the flies and the maggots they like that kind of thing well the demons are like flies the more messy you and I get the more they like it. The more funky you and I get, the more they like it. Demons love funk. That's why people should not have a funky house that you live in. You shouldn't have a funky, unclean car that you drive. You shouldn't have a funky, unclean attitude in your mind. It needs to be cleaned up by the power of the Holy Ghost. Y'all not saying nothing to me today. And whatever devils like funk, and when, and when they get in there, amen, they get worse and they get embedded in the soul of the person. And when they get embedded in the soul of the person, the person doesn't want to, they, they, it's not that the person don't want to be free is that the devil don't want to let them be free I remember Pastor Cooper used to have a saying you can touch some things and let it go but you can touch some 
things and it will not let you go. You know you can tell somebody say, well, I ain't never drunk. I ain't never smoked. I ain't never got high. I'm still a virgin. Oh, but you still do not forgive somebody. <laughs> You're still jealous of somebody. You're still this of somebody. You may not have done any of those other things, but you've done something. And when we do, and when it gives a place for the devil to come in there, and when the devil gets in there, he gets embedded in the soul of the person. And that's why you got a whole lot of Christians now that's sitting in church, smell good, look good. Everybody think they're doing good. The woman got on Chanel number five and wearing foxes and mink coats and what have you. The man wearing an Armani suit and looking good. Everybody got it going on. I know in the modern church they don't do all that no more. The folk come with jeans and slippers on and what have you. Whatever the, whatever the look is, everybody think it's doing good right there, but they don't realize the devil is all in the mix right there. The devil is all in the mind. The devil is all in the thoughts. The devil's got them looking and looking good, but on the inside, it's like they have dead man's bones in them. Y'all can say amen today. I'm here to let you know something this afternoon that Satan has come down having great wrath. It's an invasion. They're worrying about what's happening over in Israel. They're worrying about what's happening over in, uh, what's that other country over there in Europe with Russia and all that other business. They're worrying about invasions, what have you. Folks are worrying about folk coming across the border and they don't belong and what have you. I'm going to let you know something. The one invasion you need to worry about is the one that's coming down with great wrath. That's the invasion you need to worry about. The demons are coming down and they're not playing with nobody. Demons are playing for keeps. They want to rob you of your sanity. They want to rob you of your salvation. They want to rob you of your position in God. Demons are invading like nobody's business. Congress can pass whatever law they want to pass. Governor Newsom can do whatever he wants to do. Send the National Guard to the border if you want. That's irrelevant. It's the invasion that's coming from the spirit realm that we need to worry about. That's the one that's tearing the people up. It's not the man coming across the border. It's not the woman coming across the border. It's the one that's coming down from the heavens. It's the one that's coming out of the earth. That's coming into people's soul and taking over their soul. It's a sad day when a person that's got a devil in them can come to the church and not get delivered. It's a sad day when a person needs a healing and they come to the church and there's no power for them to get healed. It's a sad day when people have marriages that are broke up, tore up, shattered and whatever and they come to the church for counsel and they say we don't do that here no more. You need to go to the therapist for that. It's a bad day. But I'm going to let you know something, my ladies and gentlemen, today. That if you get full of the Holy Ghost. Hear what I say now. I know the people don't like to talk about it no more. They want to say everybody got the Holy Ghost. I'm going to pull the curtain back. I'm going to lift up the blanket, whatever you want. Everybody don't have the Holy Ghost. Don't tell me you got the Holy Ghost and you can still tell a lie. Don't tell me you got the Holy Ghost and you can still give somebody the number one finger. Don't tell me you got the Holy Ghost and you still still watch things on the internet on the phone don't tell me you got the Holy Ghost and you can stay angry for two days three days four days or whatever don't tell me you got the Holy Ghost and you don't like your fellow man or your fellow woman don't tell me you got the Holy Ghost and you can't pray no more than five or ten minutes a day don't tell me you got the Holy Ghost you ain't fasted in six months or twelve years don't tell me that don't tell me you got the Holy Ghost and you don't even like to read your Bible the devil is a lie for the Bible says we ought to study daily to show ourselves approved under God that means every day I got to read that book. A whole lot of us done got comfortable and got lazy. You know what I mean, Sister Hershey? We got lazy and comfortable, and we like to let the machine tell us what the Bible said. We like to let the phone tell us what it said. You need to begin to lick the pages again of the Bible. Some of us got dust and cobwebs on the Bible, and you need to get your book down off the shelf and begin to read your book again. You need to get your highlight up and begin to highlight those things again. Do you not know how, my God, today, there are demon spirits moving through the earth right now. Not that you can get fearful, not that you can get full of dread, but you need to understand something real good here. The only way you're going to be able to fight them devils is get God on the inside of you. You can hang around the church all you want to, and that's a good thing. But until you get full of God, you don't have it. You got to get all of God in you. You can get somebody can say amen right there. There's a devil, and he's come down having great wrath. He come down looking pretty. He come down sounding pretty. Don't you know? I remember. You remember Elder Anderson? I think it was the 70s, and Billy D. Williams was the man, man's man, was the woman's man. It was Billy D. Williams. Everyone, every woman wanted her a Billy D. Williams. Everybody wanted.
morning. Some of y'all younger folk don't know what that is. But everybody wanted them a Billy D. Williams for their man. He was a brother and he was, oh, he's quite a look. I don't know if he's dead or not, whatever. But he sure was a handsome man in his heyday. And whatever. And everybody, he was in the movie, A Lady Sing the Blues. And, and I think the other one was called, what was it called? Ebony, a whole bunch of movies he was in. And everybody just loved them some Billy D. Well, there was another, there was a female in the same time period. And her name was Jane Kennedy. Jane Kennedy was way before Holly Berry was out. And Jane had pretty hair. She was about my wife's complexion, long hair. And she was something to look at. I remember as a young child, Amy, everybody, all the boys used to get the Jet magazine. And those little bitty things look about the size of a TV, uh, TV guy, the old school TV guy. And you always wanted the swimsuit uh, thing there. And when Jane Kennedy was in there, bro, everybody was happy because everybody wanted them a Jane Kennedy, what have you. I'm going to tell you something right now. The devil know how to send you Billy D and Jane. Yes, he does. He know how to send you whatever you want. You may not want Billy D or Jane. You may want Jackie Chan or Jet Li. I don't care what you want. He knows what to send to you that you want. And when he sends her or him, they're going to sound right. They're going to look right. They're going to have on all the right things. They're going to say all the right things. They're going to do what they need to do. I was telling some brothers yesterday after the pastor's meeting, there are some women that are anointed to break a man's spirit. Yes, there are. There are some women that carry an anointing on them that they're anointed to control a man. They're anointing to break a man down. There are some women that are like that. Just like you got some men that are uh, control freaks themselves and what have you. But let me just deal with this for a moment. Let me just deal with this. Is that all right? Can I deal with this for a moment? And so forth. And you got some that are anointed for to do that. They, I mean, you got some that are anointed that they, they don't even realize they're anointed but they're anointed by the devil. They want to be able to control that man. They want to be able to manipulate him. They want him to jump how high they say jump. And I was with some brothers the other day and I told one I said if you'd have did this, you'd have been like that. They'd have controlled you. And another one I said if you'd have did that, they'd have been like that. And whatever. Because I understood the nature of the women that they were messing with in that particular time of their life. And what have you. And the women were anointed like that. And you got to understand that going back before or Jezebel. Everybody want to talk about Jezebel. They want to deal with her. But you need to go back <laughs> all the way back to Genesis the fourth chapter to Cain's wife. <laughs> In order for Cain to have a wife she had to be a woman that appealed to him. She had to have the same agenda that he had. She had the same nature that he had. She had the same diabolical thought process that he had. She was not a direct seed of the devil but she had to have the same nature like he had. To whether they have agreement and become a family. Y'all understand what I'm saying and whatever and so that's actually where that spirit begins to go at and then on down from that when it goes all the way through the flood and come out on the other side when they have the Tower of Babel and the Bible says that uh, what the king's name was I forget what his name was but he had a wife named Samaras and uh, he married her and then they had a son and they brought this son and the king's name was Nimrod thank you Holy Ghost and he married his mother and they had a son and they called the son the son of God the reason why they called the son the son of God is because Nimrod considered himself God and he considered his mother who he married to be the mother of God and therefore that they said their son was the son of God you understand what I'm saying and what have you and so therefore it was already going on before Jezebel now we fast forward it all the way up to Jezebel Jezebel and Ahab. She was some kind of woman to look at. She had the hips going. She had a small, tiny little waist. What was it? 36, 24, 36. I think that's what it used to be. And she had that going on. And she looked like something. She had the eyelashes and the eyebrows. She had the hair banging and whatever. But she was of unrighteous seed. You have to understand, Ahab was of righteous seed. But he was a weak man that could be controlled by an evil woman. And when he married her, he had a thought in his mind. If I marry her because she was the daughter of a king of the pagan kingdom and he was a son under the righteous sheep. His mind was if I marry Jezebel I can control it all. I can have it all. I can have both the pagans and the righteous both. And he married her but he did not take into account that she had a spirit on her that was able to control him and manipulate him. She was able to move him around like a piece of chess on a chessboard, if you will. And so forth. And she did just that. That's why she got emboldened full of 
the devil that when Elijah the great prophet showed up and had the battle with the mother false prophets she said oh y'all step aside here tell that man this time tomorrow I'm going to have his head when a woman talks with that kind of authority that she's going to have somebody's head she's shown up anointed by the devil and you see now women will rise up and act up in ways that they never thought they ever would in life am I putting women down no I'm married to one I got a mom and I got three daughters so no I'm not but I'm telling you about a spirit that's in the earth is what I'm doing and she will rise up and say tell that prophet that I'll have his head this time tomorrow and he got full of fear and ran off and whatever because when a preacher has preached his message he's at his weakest point and you need to have the right kind of people around you yes you do and so forth. and so he ran off and then we know what happened to her but wait it wasn't over there Ahab and Jezebel had a daughter and I forget what her name is and that daughter that they had married another king of Israel another one and the cycle repeated itself again she was just as evil as her mother she was just as diabolical as her mother and she was just as beautiful as her mother was and she did the same thing all over again but wait it didn't stop there it went all the way through the Old Testament book all the way to the John the Baptist time you have to understand let me paint you a picture can I paint you a picture for a moment the king is having a party Herod and all his royal subjects is there all the rulers and senators are there and Herodias daughter who Herod was having an affair with which was his brother's wife and John had came and said you shouldn't do that you are full of the devil and so on Herodias got mad and said kill him now but 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 Herod had fear and said no I like him let's just put him in jail and but then his birthday came oh boy watch out now and when his birthday came, Herodias' daughter got out there and she began to shake that thing like nobody's business. And Herod was eating grapes and whatever and said, my goodness today. He said, that looks so good to me, I'll give you half my kingdom. <laughs> Just tell me what you want. And she consulted with her mother, the Bible says. Why y'all men looking at me like I'm crazy? You know I'm telling the truth. And whatever. And, and he asked her, he asked him, asked her, she asked her mother. And her mother said, give me John the Baptist's head in a cruiser. And what have you. And so then Herodias, the daughter, comes back and she done shook it and messed him all up. Notice, 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 notice. She didn't even have to lay down with the man. She didn't even have to go kiss him once. A woman, when she's anointed by the devil, all she got to do is release the right set of hormones from her body. All she got to do is put on the right type of appeal on herself. All she got to do is have the right look and the right demeanor. A woman outside of God that when Satan can get a hold of that and mess it up, I'll get to the men in a minute, can get to that and then use her to destroy a man. Yes, it will. And then the daughter came back and said, well, my, I think I want John the Baptist's head in a cruise. <laughs> He didn't want to do it, but he had to keep his oath because all the people witnessed it. And he took John's head off. Yes, he did. And it's going on today all the way till now. Well, now let me deal with the men, if you will. You got a lot of men that's weak and don't know God like they should know him. You got a lot of men that are frail and worried about, uh, well, I, I don't want to help make her upset and whatever. And let's just start with Brother Samson with Delilah there. He's had strong enough to whoop thousands of men. Strong enough to wear the men out with the jawbone of an ass. Strong enough to handle business and whatever and all that and yet here come a woman huh, that anointed and able to break him down. You got a lot of men now that have no integrity. You got a lot of men now that have no stamina. They'll whoop a man in the street go toe to toe but let their wife rise up and watch them back down let their mama rise up and watch them back down let another woman on the job rise up and watch them back down but any man they'll challenge him into a duel to the death and yet there's Samson who allowed a woman to break him down and he was weak in that area and so therefore she was able to compromise him and get him down men are not supposed to be like that and as a result of that it caused calamity in the land but we know God gave him one last victory yes he did but it did have to go down like that. In fact, God tried to warn him before that and say, why you want to mess with these women over here? Isn't there not a woman in all the land of Israel you can choose? He said, no, I don't want that. And you see, men are governed by what they see. Yes, they are. Men are governed. They say, no, here's a good Christian woman right here. She loved God and she and she loved the Lord and she'll be a good wife for you. No, but she ain't got 36, 24, 36. But 
but that don't got nothing to do with it. But no, I don't want that. I want that over there. Ain't nobody saying nothing to me right now. I want that over there. And guess what? Mother man that I know that gets that over there, they end up in a worse state because they end up they end up being handpicked, they end up being controlled, or they end up in divorce. One of them three things ends up happening to them because they were chose by what they seen rather than what did God say. A real godly woman will carry herself in a godly manner. She'll carry herself in a way of righteousness. That's why the Bible says, let the women be the daughters of Sarah. Not that they can bow down and, 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 be, and, and be subservient to a man, but they understand that as a woman, I'm God's princess. I'm God's choice. But you got a lot of foolish men. I know Christian men that say, girl, I want you to get in that gym and lose that weight. I want you to do this so you can look this way. And that's that man's lust coming out through him. He want her to be chiseled like a certain kind of way shame on you man you on your way to hell if that's how you think because you shouldn't want your woman to look a certain kind of way so she can appeal to you like other women in the world shame on you you're on your way to hell and you need to get that right but there's a lot of men that want their women to say no you can't eat I've been out with them and they say no she don't need to eat that that's too many calories I've been with them that's too many calories we don't want her to have that and we don't want her to do it and she might have wanted a biscuit she might have wanted a slice of pie but he gave her the look and said don't eat that because that's going to be too much if you do that, you got to spend an extra hour on the treadmill. The devil, if I was that man's wife, I'd say, you know what? I know the Bible says her wives don't leave your husband, but I think I'm going to go over here for a little while. You stay over here with your treadmill and you go to bed with your treadmill. That's what you do. If I was this woman, amen, but thank God I'm not. Somebody say amen right there. And you got a lot of men that like to govern themselves after that kind of way. They want their wife to look like some fitness freak woman out there in the world. Shame on you. Why you want her to have her hair like the woman in the world? Why you want her to dress like the woman in the world? Why you want her to act like the woman in the world? And you're supposed to be a Christian man. You're supposed to be speaking in tongues and leading your house as a priest. But yet you want your woman to wear clothes like the world work. Let you want and then you put guilt trip on her and say, well, if you look more appealing, I'd lay down with you more. If you did this, I'd want to hold your hand more. The devil is a lie. You on your way to hell if you don't get that right and learn to cherish what God has given you. She may not have 36, 24, 36, but she know how to pray and wash your dirty drawers. What's wrong with you? You better learn how to appreciate what God has given you. She know how to stay up all night and take care of your children that, that act up a fool. You didn't have no problem laying down making the children. Now you don't want nothing to do with the children. You want her to do everything with the kid and it's your seed that's in her that gang the kid out the devil is a lie. I'm telling you the truth today. You got a lot of men that's full of the devil. And everybody, if we don't get it right, the devil's taking people out. You got a lot of Christian folk that the only time they have an enjoyment is when they're in the gym together. When they can look over there and see her and she can see him. Now everybody's happy. Why you don't make the devil out of a line and say, no, we're going to go to hometown and we're going to enjoy one another eating food together. We're going to enjoy one another and seeing you. I don't care if you do got a pot belly. I don't care if you do got a flab here. I don't care. We need to get the world out of our mouth. Y'all not saying nothing to me today. We need to get the world out of our mindset. Stop wanting her to wear skin tight clothes so she can look a certain kind of way. The only man that need to see her body is you. The only other man that know what her body look like is God. Why you want other men to see your woman's chest? Why you want men to see your uh, woman's behind? What's wrong with you? You need to understand something. I'm preaching to the internet as well. There's a whole lot of men out there that are silly. I know the Bible says that there are silly women laden with sin, but you got a lot of men that's silly nowadays, Elder Anderson. You got a lot of men that don't have no grip on God. They're carnal as the day is long. And men need to learn how to pray until God changes them. Men need to learn how to break until God fix them. Men need to learn how to God, labor out with God until he drive all the devil out of them. In fact, I'll tell on myself. It was about six years ago. I told one of the brothers in the church, hey amen, I used to like to see my wife wear certain kind of pants. About six years ago, I'll tell the truth. And I remember I was about to buy some pants in the store and the Lord said, what you doing that for? He said, what you doing that for? I said, see, you doing that because that's your lust. You doing that because that's your lust. You want to see it. But how many men you going to cause to fall and see because they see her like that too? I put them bad boys back up on the hook and I ain't bought no pants in six years. Don't nobody need to see all that but me. And y'all not saying nothing to me. 
but you got a lot of men. They don't shut down. So the devil is alive. The devil is alive. I need him to look a certain kind of way to keep me excited so I can perform in the bedroom. If that's what you need to perform in the bedroom, you're not saved no ways. You need to tie that thing up and get on the altar and get delivered. Somebody say amen somewhere. Amen. Folk need to learn how to spend time with God and lock out and lock in with God. Amen. You need to learn how to say, I may not can shut in the church, but I'm going to shut in my house. I'm going to spoil the come blinds down. I'm going to lock the door. I'm going to turn the phone off and the TV off. I'm not fooling with nothing for three days and three nights. I'm going to lay out in my room until God take the devil out of me. I'm not getting up until I get delivered. I'm not getting up until I get free. Men need to learn how to be praying men. The Bible said men are always to pray and not think. Amen. You got a lot of men at the five minutes, Elder Anderson, Deacon Eddie. They're through praying right there. They're going to walk in like this and they think they're not really touching God. They're just trying to keep them going to sleep and whatever. And we need to learn how to lay out with God. That lets me know that you put more time with other things than you do with God. We need to be like the men in the Bible that learn how to spend quality time with God. Learn how to talk to God and walk with God. Learn how to love God even when your wife is upset at you. Learn how to love God and pray for her. Even when your kids is upset with you. Learn how to praise God and give God glory. Y'all not saying nothing to me. Amen. I'm going to let you know something. It's the last days we're living in. You might think you got 30 more years. I don't know. But I'm going to tell you this right now. If we're not holy and right, it doesn't matter. We're not going to see God. We got to put the stuff to the side. You got to put the agendas down and lock in with God. It's you to preach to your house. Your wife is looking at you. Your kids is looking at you. Don't say, I got a moment of weakness. You can't afford a moment of weakness. You better get on the altar and let God purge you out. You better get on the altar and let the fire of the Holy Ghost get you delivered. You better get on the altar because you're going to give account for that man or that woman. You're going to give account for them children. I'm talking to the men right now. Every man you are a priest to your house. If you're not married, you're a priest to yourself. God's holding you accountable. How you keep your mind. How you keep your thoughts. How you keep your heart right. Too many of us, we allow the devil to play patty cake in our mind. We allow the devil to make a nest in our mind. You got to learn how to gird up the loins of your mind in the word of God. You got to learn how to let God get inside of you and burn out everything that's not like him. Somebody can say man right there and learn how to say I love God with all my heart. I love God with all my mind. I'm going to be a priest to my wife. I'm going to be a priest to my children. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to show my family how to do this thing right. Y'all can say man right there. I'm serious, folks. I'm serious. Satan is not playing. He's come down with great wrath. I know I'm not preaching, teaching about that third, the wise version, the third section, third part. Because I was weighing in my spirit as I was reading that first of the scriptures. And the Lord said, don't go past the warfare part. He said, don't go past that. I don't know if the church is not ready for it or not. I don't know. But I'm obeying God. That's what I'm doing. Men and women, we got to be sanctified. Sanctification is not just a word. It's a lifestyle. It's not just looking good and saying all the right scripture. But it's living the scripture. I know it's crazy out there and it's, it's everywhere, but then we have a responsibility. Job 31, let me read Job 31. And I usually don't like to use other additions because it brings a little bit of confusion, but has anybody got a, a Tyndale or, or, or uh, what's that thing, uh, Amplified Bible? Yeah, anybody? Got one of those with them? Okay, if you do, maybe you got it on your device. Maybe you can read it on your device. How about that? I'll read it in the King James, and then you read it on your device. And then we'll just, Dick and Eddie will bring the microphone to you. When you, if you who, who, who has it on the device? Which, which version do you have? Tyndale or All right. You, you keep the Tyndale, and then Dick and Eddie will come over to take that mic over there, please. And then when I'm going to read it in the King James, and this is for the men. This is for the men, because a lot of times folks say, you, they get on me, they say, you always talk about the women. Well, today I'm talking about the men. And I'm not talking about you in a negative way. I'm trying to help us. 
Because we got to see Jesus. Now I'm going to read it in the King James. Job 31 says this. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? It's Job talking about. I made a covenant. Why then should I look upon a maid? Think of a maid. In other words, why should I look on somebody to lust after them? For what portion of God is there from above? And what inheritance of the Almighty from on high? Is not destruction of the wicked and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? Look, does not he see my ways and count all my steps? I don't know why we keep thinking that God don't see everything. I, I just don't understand that. It baffles me, Daryl Jones, Reed, Alex, and Babylon. Why we don't think God see everything, Elder Anderson? Not only see it, but knows we're going to do it before we do it. Amen. Why we think I pulled the blind down, couldn't nobody see? <laughs> that ain't got that. I was somewhere there. That was somewhere, and the folks here closed the curtains. As my mind said, well, we need to close these curtains for God can see in here. Amen. Well, I said, okay, I'll do what you want. Doth not he see my ways and count all my steps? Five. If I have walked with vanity, that's pride and so forth, or in my foot have hasted to do deceit. In other words, I ran to get into some stuff. Six. Let me be weighed even in balance that God may know my integrity. And let God mess with me and try me up. Seven. If my step have turned out of the way and my heart walked after Mine eyes. In other words, I done got caught up in what I see with my flesh eye. And if any blot have cleaved to my hands, then let me sow and let another eat. Yea, let my offspring be rooted out. Nine, if my heart have been deceived by a woman, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door. In other words, if I plotted, now hold it. If I plotted, to lay down, to mess up, either physically or nowadays, even in your mind. I plotted. I made sure I waited till the wife left before I turned the channel on. I made sure I was at work. But when I pulled out my machine, my device, to look at the channel. I plotted to do that one. That's what he's saying. Look what he says happened. Then let my wife grind unto another another. And let others bow down upon her. In other words, if I plot like that, then I deserve to let another man go on and do what he want to do with my wife. And I don't got nothing to say about it. I'm tripping on other people's women. Then I, I have no right. If I find out my wife having an affair, messing around, and somebody done done what they done done, who am I to get mad? I ain't got no right to get mad at nobody. Now read it in Nintendo. I made a covenant with my eyes not to look with lust at a young woman. Not to look. A covenant means an agreement. That's what it means. It means agreement. Everybody say agreement. Agreement. I made an agreement with my eye. I'm not going to do this. For what has God above chosen for us? What is our inheritance from the Almighty on high? Isn't it calamity for the wicked and misfortune for those who do evil? Doesn't he see everything I do and every step I take? Doesn't he see everything? Yes. Now, somebody get fooled to death and be like, well, if he sees it, oh, well, I'm just, let me just go on and die and go on to hell. You don't have no idea what you're saying. Mm -mm. You have no idea what you're saying. We should never say that. We should say, God help me. Amen. Amen. God help me. Read. Have I lied to anyone or deceived anyone? Wait, have I lied to anyone? Have I lied to anyone? Yes. Not just the folk in my house. The people on my job, I'm talking about I love the Lord, but I still look at the magazine. And I'm talking about I'm a Christian and I love the Lord. Don't sit there and lie to yourself, well, I'm just wicked in my flesh. You ain't even saved then. If you're preaching Jesus and you're talking about I'm this and that and the other, and then you're still looking at the book and carrying on like that, you, that, you don't hate the Bible, so you're not even saved. You're lying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're lying. Too many folks talking about, well, I just had 
a weakness and everybody ain't nobody perfect and that's the same person that's going to go straight to hell too. Instead of saying, you know what? We should just say when it's like this, and you know what? I, I like to watch things about God and all that, but I'm, yeah, I, I'm not really no Christian because I'm still doing this. But I'll probably get up there and be like, no, nah, I'm, I'm Christian. Because I, I, lo I love the Lord, brother. I love the Lord, but I still, I still do this here. And when I'm in the shower, when I'm wherever I am, I do my business. But I love the Lord. That's lying to people. He said all liars will have their part. All liars. Read. Amen. Let God weigh on me on the scales of justice, for he knows my integrity. If I have strayed from his pathway, or if my heart has lusted for what my eyes have seen, Look. or... If my heart, everything beginning, we be thinking about is my mind. Vanessa, when I call names, I'm not picking on nobody. I'm just, I'm just using y'all as point of contact because I need to keep myself encouraged while I'm preaching. We, it all be thinking, we be thinking about my mind, my mind. We need to be worried about the heart. The mind is the battlefield. That's going to be what it's going to be. You're going to fight until you die. But it's their heart. The Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth what? Jesus. There you go. Read. What my eyes have seen, or if I'm guilty of any other sin, then let someone else eat the crops I have planted. If I'm guilty of any other sin, not just lusting and tripping, but I'm in emulation. Y'all told y'all, I taught y'all what emulation was some weeks ago. Y'all remember what that was, right? Y'all remember that? I ain't gonna put you on the spot, man. Everybody say, emulation means you wanna be equal with somebody. Mm -hmm. oh. You wanna be equal with them, and you, 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 you kinda envy what they want. It's not jealousy, though. Jealousy is a little deeper thing, because then when you're jealous, then you really harm that person to get what you want. Envy, you just wanna be equal with them, or be a little bit above them. Mm -hmm. Emulations, I'm talking about emulations. He said, any other sin, any other sin. That's why we all got to be honest with ourselves and let God speak to us. Amen. We, act like we got it all together and got stuff hanging out the pocket and this and that and whatever. Say, no, I ain't got it all together like that, but I need prayer. Pray for me. Yeah. I want to get, get free. Read. Let all that I have planted be uprooted. If my heart has been seduced by a woman or if I have lusted for my neighbor's wife, then let my wife serve another man. Let, another, let other men sleep with her. For lust is a shameful sin, a crime that should be punished. Okay, that's good enough. Look what he's saying. If I lust for another woman, basically, let somebody just go ahead and do what they're going to do with mine. I remember years ago, I was talking to somebody. I said, you know, you need to think about this. I said, this person had a daughter. This was years ago, years and years ago. I said, you gotta have, this was years ago. I said, you, gotta, you need to think. See, we're doing, you're doing this, we, this and this and that and all this. They ain't, they ain't been at this church, and so don't even try to figure out who I'm talking about. You need to think. You got a daughter. You don't want nobody thinking about your daughter like that. You want to whoop them? You want to get them, you want to jack them up. If you hear about a man or another young man trying to do fitting buddies with your daughter, you won't act crazy, but yet you're going to watch this man's daughter on the movie. Or your neighbor, or the girl next door, the girl at the checkout line at the grocery store. All that. But you don't want nobody to mess with your daughter now. You want me to mess with that? Because now you're going to talk about, oh, no, no, I got to get the, I got to get the, 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 the rod of correction now and all that. I got to get, I got to get, got to get my sidearm. Got all, you know, I don't fool with mine, but I can fool with everybody else. And he said right there, he said, oh, the Lord said, you, you won't think like that? Then I'm going to let somebody do, let, let, let somebody get a hold of your stuff. Now, get a hold of yours. I've been doing this thing so long, I say it all the time, and I don't mean to be prideful. I've been doing this thing all so long, Elder Anderson. People get in adultery, these men get in adultery, they mess up, and they want to ask the woman to forgive them, and they think within three, four days a week or whatever, she's supposed to be over every day. 
And then they get mad. And I've been in the council session where one time, and this was a long time ago, this person never part of this church and under my pastoral ship. They went to their house, this is the truth, and they had a situation, what have you, and whatever, and they brung some stuff to try to be appealing and all. And, and, and remember the, the wife was, was saying, said, I don't understand why he, he bringing this. Every time he won't, you know, this and this, now he want to come bring you know, some flowers and some candy. And this is what he want to do. And men, we think like that. There's some flowers and some candy just supposed to fix everything. You just went out and then laid down with somebody. And because, well, I said, I'm sorry, didn't I? And then they get stupid and be like, well, if you would have never done, if you wouldn't have done, if you have been this way, then I would have done it no ways. Oh, I've seen them talk stupid like that. If you would have been more, if you would have looked different, if you, I told you you need to lose 10 pounds, if you would have had lost them 10 pounds, then I would have been looking over there. It's your fault. You on your way to hell. And I'm not talking about the woman. I'm talking about the men. She didn't make you go over there and lay down. She make you do that. But I've seen it. Elder, I've seen it. I want the woman to forgive him. I'm be honest with you. I'm be honest with you. I'm, I'm talking to my church. In fact, internet, God bless you. We love you all. The Lord catch you next, we catch you next week. Send in your question to the internet thing. Q&A. I need to say this to my church.